this is Joshua for Frost Dragon Designs, and today I'd like to talk to you about my Geometry Cat Hard Enamel Pin. This pin is part of my More Cats Doing Science collection. The More Cats Doing Science Pin collection features more than 35 designs of cats doing science and science-adjacent activities. Now let's get into the design. This was another one of the pins that was requested very frequently. Not geometry specifically, but a math cat. And that makes sense. I mean, math and science kind of go hand in hand. A lot of uh, higher level science require higher level math to describe things in them. Physics especially. Um, but, you know, not just physics. Chemistry uses a lot of math as well. And I've always kind of found math fascinating if you think about it. Um... Language, like like English and other languages, are, I guess they're kind of like generative. Like, we made them up to express our thoughts, right? So, like, language, English does not naturally exist, if that makes any sense. Math, on the other hand, is, you know, it's created to describe things that are almost like inherent to the fabric of the universe, Math describes kind of these inherent properties in systems that exist in nature, not just on Earth, but out in space. Um, you know, it's a system of measuring. It's a system of uh, predicting. Uh, it's not generative. It is, it's descriptive of, like, the very fabric of reality is how I like to think of math. And so when everyone was saying, yeah, you need to do a math cat, I was like, yes, of course, that makes so much sense. We should do a math cat. Um... But honestly, it's so hard to figure out. I mean, like a lot of these other science cat pin designs, they, they almost uh, invoke imagery unto themselves. Like, you know, you say a chemistry cat and, you know, a myriad of ideas just flood into your head, at least mine anyway. You know, cat mixing potions and test tubes and beakers and, you know, Bunsen burners, all that good stuff. We're, we're doing chemistry. Yay. Uh, physics, you know, can do something similar. Botany, biology, you know, it all it all has ready-made imagery, uh, I feel like. Like, you say it, and, like, kind of mental pictures start popping up. But then when I say math cat, I had, like, nothing. I thought of a cat standing in front of a chalkboard. And that's what we ended up with, with this design. It's a cat standing in front of a chalkboard. Now, there's some interesting things about that, though. You know, I mean, the, the first question that comes up is, what kind of math are we going to be expressing on the chalkboard? So that was one interesting question. And the other question was, how are we going to depict the cat? If he's front-facing, we're going to have to have him off to the side, like, like a teacher who's just written something up on the board and is pointing, you know, or looking at the class and saying, hey... You know, this is this is what I'm talking about. You know, it's like geometry. Now that's what I'm talking about. You know, uh, or the other thing that we could do is we could have them literally writing on the board, in which case they're not going to be front facing like all the other science cats. And so I thought to myself, this is a legitimate reason to have the cat facing away from the viewer. And I I liked that. You know, I mean, I love that all the science cats, or almost all the science cats, are in a very similar pose. They're all wearing, or almost all of them are wearing lab coats. Almost all of them are standing on books. I, I like that these things are all cohesive, but I also like when I selectively kind of break my own rules with good reason. Like, doing it for no reason makes no sense. Like, oh, he's wearing, you know, a bright green jacket. Or a, a orange lab coat. Why? No, that doesn't make any sense. There's no reason for that in this design. But to have them not be in the same pose, to have them have their back toward the viewer for the specific reason that they're writing on the chalkboard, that I like. Coincidentally, that also meant that I had that much less chalkboard space that I had to fill up with math things. Which brings us right back to the question of why did I choose geometry? Well, I love geometry. Geometry is awesome. You know, as an artist, as a designer, uh, geometry is probably the math that I use most frequently in my day-to-day -day life. Okay, actually, algebra probably is, specifically cross-multiplication. I find that extremely useful, like, all the time. But outside of that, geometry. And so I wanted it to be something from geometry that would be recognizable to everyone, but not, like, super, super simple. Um, something that would be just interesting to look at and could take up the amount of space that I would have left over after the cat took up some of the chalkboard. And after thinking about it for a while, it just popped into my head the Pythagorean theorem. And I was like, yes, because there's multiple ways of illustrating this. We have the literal illustration with the triangle. 
we have the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then the derivative equations of the square roots. And I was just like, this is perfect. This will take up the, you know, just the right amount of visual space on the chalkboard. And if you want, as a fun side bonus, you can punnily call it the Pythagorean theorem. You know, paws like like cat's paws. Pythagorean, not like P A U L. No, not like Paul, but Paul, P A W. You know, like like the little fuzzy feet. And so it all just kind of came together as I was working on it. I was really happy with it. Now, the only problem is this is kind of a big pin, which makes it a little awkward for wearing. But if you put it on like a backpack or a work bag or something like that, I think it's really great. Uh, also, pin boards are great options. You could still wear it on a shirt or a jacket, but it, it honestly is a little big for that application. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this pin. I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, create this design. Uh, if you did, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. I try to put out one to two new videos a week, and I would love to have you along for the next one. So thank you again so much for your time, and have a great rest of your day.